What's going on, everybody? Welcome to my brand new channel, Battle Cage, uh, formerly known as MMA Oracle in the community, uh, where I was just literally just going off and um, spinning off my picks and um, and giving you guys my um, my bets and things like that. Uh, here, I want to take it uh, with a little bit of a um, uh, different angle, where I definitely want to talk fights. I love fight, um, but I will also talk about like more of combat sports. Um, uh, not just, you know, MMA. Now, for those of you who know me, I am predominantly um, UFC guy. So that's like my major organization. But I have been watching a little bit of Bellator and keeping up with uh, other organizations like One Championship as well. Um, yeah, so without further ado, let's uh, look at today's card. We got a banger. We have UFC 266. In this particular uh, segment, I will focus on the main card, and then um, depending on how I do and how many views I get um, or requests. For example, if you uh, want me to break down the prelims, make sure you hit me up and uh, comment uh, down below and um, let me know you want to get some uh, prelims. Uh, however, if you're interested in a certain fight, okay, um, we could look at that uh, instead of just breaking out every single one we can highlight the most uh, fun uh, fights and go from there. But this is a full uh, a breakdown of the main card, okay? And uh, so let's kick it off with, um, I believe, the main card. As you can see, point of reference, um, I will show you in a minute. I use uh, FanDuel for the lines. And... Um, it starts with Jessica Andrade and Cynthia Calveo. All right, so without further ado, let's take a look at UFC 266. We got UFC 266, Volkanovski Ortega taking place this Saturday, September 25th. Uh, main card is scheduled for 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have currently 13 fights. The last card to hit the deck is uh, Menan Firo. Pardon me. I uh, just ate <laughs> versus Myra Bueno Silva. So, yeah, that fight is RIP. I hope they rescheduled. I was actually looking forward to that fight, um, to be quite honest with you. So to, f to kick things off, we have the former 125 challenger, the former 115 champion, Jessica Andraj, taking on Cynthia Calveo. Who suffered a defeat to Caitlin Kokagan, the prior 125 challenger um, against Valentina Shevchenko? Uh, so, why this is important, why do I bring it up, is because it just so happens that Jessica Andrade earned her title fight by severely taking out um, Caitlin Kokagan via. Uh, just a nasty hook to the body. She just went ripped to the body and just, um, Caitlin just, you know, she just couldn't take it. She probably hit the liver because her whole body shut down. She just fell. So, yeah. So, which tells me that Jessica Andrade uh, possesses nasty power. This is a girl that's not afraid to swing. This is a girl that's not afraid to grapple and whatnot. Uh, in her last fights, you'll see three L's. But she's losing to champions. She lost to Weili Zhang, who knocked her out in like, what, seconds, 40 seconds or something. She just got caught in blitz. And then uh, she went all the way to split with former, well, well actually with the current uh, champion, Rose Nama Yunus. Um, and then, you know, moved up a weight class, fought Caitlin Kokagan, earned that title shot against Valentina, and she just got destroyed. And we knew that. Anyway, she she's sticking around in the 125 division. She's pretty small. She's stocky as uh, shit. Um, this is a true representation. If you look at her arms, just bigger arms than me. I'll tell you that much. And I'm a pretty solid kind of guy. So uh, very, very stocky. The bookies have priced her incredibly high at this point she's at minus 290 do not be surprised if it goes up if she comes out looking like a beast on the scale it's only gonna go up guys uh, this is my opinion um, so that's just where we stand in terms of value the return 
uh, buyback on Cynthia Calveo is plus 220 in the books. Actual line is plus 225. You might even get up to 230 to 235 um, as the as the week progresses. Okay, so that's kind of where we stand. Cynthia Calveo, I'm not very very high on her. She's 34 years old and only has what 13. Um, uh, what is this? Twelve fights in um in her career versus thirty fights for Jessica Andrade. So that kind of speaks volume to me. Plus, Jessica Andrade is thirty years of age. So yeah, uh, obviously we're gonna be backing uh, Jessica Andrade. I would say possibly a parlay piece at the moment. Um, by the time we get to Saturday, I can't stress if that's going to be the case to be honest so i'm going to go with the final pick uh for me and i'm going to say jessica andraj okay then we got heavy boys throwing it down we got curtis bladis taking on jersinia rosenstruck curtis bladis is a phenomenal wrestler perhaps um he probably has the most takedowns in the heavyweight division so he comes in from a very good um, uh, camp, elevation fight team. They, those boys train really, really hard out there. I have nothing but respect for them. He's, com he's coming in, you know, as, as a big favorite. You know, this says moderate, but, you know, anytime you go over to, to, to something, you already kind of a big favorite in my eyes. And now you, you're at 320, so you are a big favorite at this point. Uh, live line, according to FanDuel. Is going to be minus 350. So, yeah, you're definitely a big boy uh, favorite over at, at this point. He's 30 years old. Uh, last weight was 259. Um, so, size-wise, 6464 uh, six, and a 2-inch reach advantage for Curtis Bladis. Curtis Bladis definitely has the knockout potential power, as you can see, taking out Shimil Abdurmakhrarov, who's also featured on this card in the prelims. Um, and that was two years ago, so he does have the knockout potential. I just don't think he has enough knockout potential to square with Biggie Boy uh, because Biggie Boy, Jarzinho Rosenstruck, is a phenomenal uh, kickboxer with an extensive record, and he's really, really, uh, he got the death touch. So you see two L's and uh, three W's, and guess what? Three W's were all KO's. Uh, what you got to know about Rosinio Rosenstruck, um, he doesn't use his legs as much as I would, would like. Being, you know, a kickboxer, I would prefer uh, Biggie Boy to implement more of a um, solid kicking game. And that way he can keep his range. Another thing about Jarzinho Rosenstruck uh, that I've noticed over the past five fights is that his volume is absolutely horrendous. He doesn't push gas when he needs to because he does possess the power. I don't know. He's just very timid sometimes and doesn't commit. Um, when he does commit and when he does punch people, he, he punches them out, okay? So as you can see, um, this fight over here, Alistair Overeem, I actually was backing Jarzinho Rosenstruck, had a big play on him. Uh, that was like the beginning of when I got into... Um, uh, playing MMA, I was always into MMA, but that's when I started actually playing MMA, and um, I thought I was losing this fight right up until the last five seconds or so, where he hit Alistair Overeem and um, he caught him. So the reason I've referenced this fight is because I do see Curtis Bladis implementing a very smart, intelligent um, uh, fight game. Uh, he just got knocked out by Derek Lewis. Uh, so he compared Jarzinho Rosinger to him. He just said he's just not as good as Derek Lewis. I might have to disagree. I, I think Jarzinho Rosenstruck is good. I really do. I believe in his power. Um, one negative thing, like I said, that I will that I would like him to address is his output. It's very, very low. It's um in fact it's poor, it's unsatisfactory. If you ask me, he's very, very timid, doesn't let his hands uh, fly as he should, and he does not utilize his uh, kicking foundation, being a kickboxer, as much as he should, okay, to score points, to hurt the leg, you know, to find weaknesses, to keep distance, and, and you know, implement his own game, and uh, and be in his own element, if you will. So with that, with that consideration, if the fight is standing, but low output, 
I do see Curtis Blades being smart if it remains standing and uh, Jarzinho Rosenstruck decides to push tempo and and start, you know, you know, throwing haymakers and walling out on Curtis Blades. I do I do support his power. Like I said, I have nothing but respect for that power. But if Curtis Blades is able to close the distance and take Jarzinho Rosenstruck uh, down to the mat and, t- and welcome to his world, he's definitely going to grind him out. I don't think he knocks out Jarzinho Rosenstruck because um, when he loses, uh, he loses by unanimous decisions, although he got starched. He got absolutely starched. I mean, if you did not, it's one of the most vicious knockouts of last year uh, by Francis Ngannou. He just violated um, Jarzinho Rose. I mean, literally just came out swinging bombs, and he just landed. Um, and Francis Ngannou power is just, it's scary, actually. It's its really, really scary. So he was able to land um, one and done. And as as R- R- Jarzinho Rosenstruck is literally like falling down, you see another punch just going, bop, just... Very, very, very crazy knockout. So he bounced back, took out JDS with a knockout, no surprise. Uh, lost to Cyril Gan. I was still disrespecting Cyril Gan. I should have backed Cyril Gan massively in that spot. Um, I believe that was my last chance to really back him. Let me see. Uh, in that fight, Cyril Gan was giving you minus 235, and we should have went all in on that. Um, but again, I was disrespecting Cyril Gunn over there, okay? In any case, um, the smart pick is Curtis Bladis. Um, the smarter pick will be Curtis Bladis by decision because that's just where he thrives. Um, you see unanimous KO against Shamil. Um, he did knock out JDS, but everybody kind of knocks out JDS. And then a, a a wonderful decision against Volkov. Curtis Bledis does not mind grinding out the fight. And um, I think he doesn't want to get knocked out. So he's definitely, if you're going to back Curtis Bledis, to put a dent on minus 320 would to would be to take Curtis Bledis by decision because he's going to grind this fight and make it, you know, a greasy fight and just push Jarzinho Rosenstruck to the limit. If you're going to back Rosenstruck, it's not going to be by points. I don't think so because I said um, he's he has historically displayed a low uh, volume. So very hard to back a fighter that way. Uh, but him by KO is definitely uh, the way to go if you ask my personal opinion. And many people will tell you. You're probably um, on this as well. So method of victory. Curtis Blade is by KO. Is 120. I don't think anyone should be playing that. That's just not enough juice. Curtis Blade is by points minus two, uh, plus 220 is where I think is is a, is a good, uh, you know, point. Jarzinho by knockout is plus 420, and again, that's where I really see um, most of the value. Um, if you're gonna drop a parlay like a five dollar miracle parlay, uh, please you could. You could include that. Do not be mad. You know what I'm saying? I would do that. In fact, I will do that. So we're going to drop the Miracle Parlay. And we're going to put that. That That's just how I think it. Um, oh, It's either that or this. It depends where you want to go. I do see. I do. As much as I want to take this, I'm going to. I'm going for a Miracle. So I'm going to go with Jarzinho by KO just to. Uh, make the miracle parlay, you know, more fantastic. Um, and to go back a bit, if we're gonna back Jessica Andraj, I think we should just just take her money line because she can either knock her out, take her decision, uh, submit her. We don't know how it's gonna happen, so just take the money line at this point and just throw in a parlay. And then we got um, moving down along a treat of a fight, okay. We are absolutely in for a treat of a fight. We got two legends, Robbie the Ruthless Lawler taking on Nick Diaz. This is the second fight um, in their first outing years ago. Years ago. Um, what is this? Has it, Was this already a decade? When did they fight? Um, 
when did they fight because you know we're talking about years ago who's this is Robbie Lawler let's look up the early losses Nick Diaz right here so it, oh my goodness in 2004 Lord have mercy in 2004 I was like in Disneyland I was not even it's just years ago okay that's just scary how many years ago that was <sighs> yeah so that is a a fight in the making this was this was UFC 47 can you can you imagine um this was where UFC was really g gaining traction that you know early 2000s where you know up until 2010 is where UFC really made UFC UFC and then it just became this huge global brand uh, but during that decade, from the early 2000s up until 2010, you know, we had a lot of legends. We only have a limited amount of these fighters remaining. Um, and it's just a, such a treat to have Robbie Lawler still fighting um, a legend, you know. Although, you know, it's it's very sad to see a lot of losses at the end of his career. Um, same thing with Nick Diaz, who didn't finish his run so well um, um, right, right, right up until, you know, he had this whole... Um, marijuana thing going, uh, which I think is bullshit. I don't think any fighter should get suspended for uh, marijuana use. At most, is a suspension, if you ask me. Um, considering knowing everything right now, it doesn't make you Superman. Um, does make you a little bit relaxed, you know. Does it give you a real edge? I, I mean, I don't think so. You could just take any supplement that, you know, mellows you out. Maybe something like. Valerian root and probably do the same effect. But definitely marijuana, you know, is a, is a better choice if you want to just chill out and rock out. So I don't mind. I, don't, I understand where Nick Diaz is coming from. And they're from California. Them boys are smoking that on the regs, you know, on the regular, like, wake and bake type of deal. So with that being said, um, I do think the whole thing was bullshit with Nick Diaz. He lost a lot of time. I mean, this was six years ago. He would have been 32. So he had 32, 33, 34, 35 prime years, maybe 36. He lost a lot of time, you know. Like, that's a lot of time. Five years, you know, how much money he could have made. He's not poor. He made a lot of money. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he's just, he's just very sad. Uh, Robbie Lawler is training on uh, Sanford MMA. Uh, if you look at him... Um, you know, he got a bunch of L's, but he's really fighting, you know, pretty, t the, b the best of the best. Here's RDA. Here's Ben Askren. I think that was a bullshit fight. Um, they, they called it a fight in a bulldog submission, but if you run it back, if you look at, you know, when, when, when the fight is called, right, when the referee calls the fight, uh, you see Robbie Lawler immediately pops up, you know, immediately, like he does not waste time his head just jerks up right away and um I think that was a bullshit stoppage you know what I'm saying so I don't really take that as a big loss because he was violating Ben Askren I mean really violating um there wasn't a single scratch on Robbie's face to be honest uh he did get manhandled by Colby Covington and everybody gets manhandled by Colby Covington he's the second best Walter Wade, Walter Wade in the division perhaps in the world you know, um, just is my opinion, okay, um, the only man that came close to beating um, Kamara Usman, if you remember their first fight, uh, right up until fifth round, you know, it looked like he was winning that fight, it looked like he, the momentum was in Colby Covington, because they just kept sluggering, there was zero wrestling going on, they just stood and, and fought, that was a great fight, by the way, and then Kamar Usman's power just prevailed. His jaw was stood, and he cracked Colby, and he broke his jaw. So, you know, so this I I can understand why Colby just violated Robbie Lawler, and then he gets violated by Neil Magny, and it's like whoa, like you know what I'm saying. So anyway, anywho, um, it's very fun to watch this fight. I wouldn't take any action. That's why you get almost even odds on either side. It's basically take your pick, flip a coin, who you like best, okay? Do you like Robbie Lawler? I like Robbie Lawler. Um, and to be quite honest with you guys, um, 
I only saw Nick Diaz fight once, and that was against uh, Georges St. Pierre. That was the only time I watched a Nick Diaz fight. I did not watch the Anderson Silva fight. Um, I want to watch it, but I heard it was just a joke. And um, he and he lost to Carlos Condit. Remember, Carlos Condit was an absolute killer back then, um, the natural born killer. He was violating in his prime years. Let's not forget that. Um, by the way, um, Carlos Condit recently retired. So thank you, sir, for everything you've done. Um, and I want you to enjoy your, you know, um, your retirement to the best of your ability. Um, in any case, you know, with in terms of size, you know, they're kind of squared up. Um, there's a lot of question marks on Nick Diaz. You know, has he been training? He says he has, but has he? Um, I think the Diaz brothers, you know, in terms of sheer entertainment value, they're probably some of the best. You want to hear them talk, even though they don't talk much. But when they do, it's hilarious, <laughs> especially Nate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, Nick Diaz is a little bit more serious, more composed. So I've been watching the Embedded episodes. He's a little bit more put together than a Nate. <laughs> uh, but, you know, there's rumors that he's been partying. He, um, he was drinking heavy, you know, during his hiatus, during his time off. Now, he says he's training. You know, these brothers, they're always training. But it's like, it's one thing just to, you know, go to the gym and train, you know, and just do your thing. And the other one is to really live that life. Um, I don't think he lives that life. Like, it's not important to him. You know, it's not the first thing he thinks about um, just to train, to, to, to compete. He probably trains to just, you know, to keep in shape and practice martial arts because that's who he is. He's a martial artist. Uh, whereas Robbie Lawler, he's actually training to compete and he's been competing and he's actually competing, um, with, with high talent. Now there is a lot of damage on Robbie Lawler versus Nick Diaz. Nick Diaz damage is probably, um, from all the drugs, from marijuana and al alcohol. Uh, but Robbie Lawler, he's just, he's getting violated in a lot of his fights. And I bet, I, I really, I, I really hope, I mean, that's not that, that's not what you want to hope, but I really, really want to say that if Robbie Lawler loses, I think he should be cut from, from the UFC because it's just, I mean, it's going to be five L's in a row. You're a legend in the game. You've done, you've done a lot. You're a former champion. You know, you've competed. You're about to be 40. Uh, there's really nothing for you to prove, you know, just save your health and, um, just enjoy your life, man. You can train. You can, uh, you can do whatever you want, you know. But just stop fighting. Uh, for Nick Diaz, I think it's a good opportunity to come back, to get a win, and then possibly fight one more time if he wants to, and then call it quits on his own terms, like to say that I didn't get kicked out, but I came, I saw, I conquered, and now I'm chill. Now I'm good. I got it out of my system. Um, I just think that's why Nick Diaz is coming back is because he. He has that itch, that last itch. Um, and this is a great welcome uh, welcome back fight for Nick Diaz. You know, they fought before. And this is a, it's an excellent fight for Robbie Lawler. If he wins, he can retire right here with a W and a revenge. The story is so beautiful. I like that story. I like Robbie Lawler to win because um, that's a great story for him. Someone who's on a massive losing streak. Um, and it's just like what Carlos did, right? Um, let's go over here. Just go, let's go over here. Uh, Carlos Condit, right? You know, he was just losing, losing nonstop, losing to Robbie Lawler, losing to Damian Maya, Neil Magny, uh, Alex Oliveira, Michael Chiesa. And then he put a nice back to back to back win, right? He won Cord McGee in 2020. He came back in January. He fought Matt Brown. What a fight. Uh, two legends in the game. He won that unanim unanimous decision. He even went into a grappling uh, against Jake Ellenberger. Got that in May. And he recently had a fight in July against Ma Max Griffith. And, you know, Max was just the younger, more hungrier fighter. And he put it on on Carlos. Although Carlos, you know, showed some grit. Um, and he said, you know what? That's it. I'm done. 
you know, 37 years old, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chill. And I do not think that's a bad thing for um, Carlos Condat. And um, so that would be wonderful for Nick Diaz to come back, maybe get a win right now, solidify that, be like, yo, I'm back, get another couple of fights, and man, just call it a day um, until you fight like one of the killers and you, God forbid, get knocked out or get hurt really, really bad. So that's the story here, you know. Um, but I love the story for, for Robbie. Um, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of Nick Diaz. I respect what he did in the past. Definitely an OG. Uh, but I like Robbie Lawler because he continued to compete. Uh, seems like a very nice, genuine guy. And um, it would be an absolute wonderful treat for him to to win and possibly retire, man, with a W. With a W, with a, with a revenge on Nick Diaz. What a wonderful way to go, man. That that's just my opinion here. Um, let's see what what the community would pretty much split. Um, a lot of love for for Diaz. Um, yeah, and um, just thinking out loud. What I'm thinking is, as you can see, Robbie Lawler is picking up love. Um, they probably th a lot of sharp betters. Are probably thinking like I am right now. That is, that he's active, that there's less question marks. Um, we do want to see the weight. We do want to see the uh, how they're gonna look on the scales. They're not even fighting on at Walter Wade 170. They're fighting 185. Um, uh, we, I've seen recent pictures of Robbie Lawler. He's in game shape. I have yet to see um, Nick Diaz. So we're gonna wait for the presser. Um, we listened to the media today. We're going to wait for the presser. We're going to see how they're going to come in on the scale. And we're going to see the face-offs. And um, that's where you could probably make your prediction. But I'm leaning Robbie Lawler. And I don't mind backing him, uh, to be quite honest. Because there's just a lot of question marks on Nick Diaz. There's just there's so many. Um, what do they have at the rounds? Um, do, 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 time stamps. Fight to start. Round two minus six fifty is an absolute just disgusting. Will the fight go to distance? Um, yes, at minus one twenty seems kind of logistically correct. Um, I think they're gonna stand there and brawl. But if there's a KO, um, I see more potential for Robbie Lawler to knock out uh, Nick Diaz just because Nick Diaz hasn't taken a punch in. Like a severe punch in, in six years. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I mean, will the fight go to distance? It's very hard. This I, I would just say I'm going to have no action on this fight. Maybe a life. If they give me a live bet, and if I see Robbie Lawler is taking off, I'm going to take him. Uh, I'm going to throw in maybe a 50. Uh, but um, I just really want to enjoy this fight and let the best killer win. That's it. We have reached the co-main event. We have Valentina Shevchenko taking on Lor Lor Lauren Murphy. Minus 1,500, I believe, for uh, the bullet, Shevchenko. Minus 2,000 in FanDuel. She's an automatic, so there's no money line at all. Like, zero money line uh, possibility at this point. Um... Uh, absolutely zero money line value, right? Um, the only thing you can do, to be quite honest, is um, round to start. I really like round to start round three. Uh, that's 172. Or I do like the, the over-under. And I believe that is... Um, let me see. Do they have the over-under? Uh, sometimes I don't I don't see things to be honest. Will the fight go to distance plus one seventy eight? Um, that is a possibility, and I will explore that option as well. Uh, but I do want to see the over under. Am I not just not seeing it? Um, I 
I'm playing the on the app version, so sometimes uh, it's. I mean, I, I I don't see it. I really don't see it. A anyway, if you guys see an over under um, on FanDuel, dude, I don't even have my phone. It's probably charging. Uh, but yeah, if if you do see the over under, it should be at two and a half, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe not. Hold on. Hold on a second, guys. Let me see if they have it on the app. Sometimes uh, there's a bit of difference, if you ask me. Just give me a second. Bear with me, guys. All right, just bear with me. Sorry I'm taking your time, but it's, it's the only way because mine is 2,000. Like, what are you going to do with that? You know what I mean? Like, there's really, what are you, you going to do? All right. Um, let's see, Nishachenko. So, I do see, will the fight go to distance? Round betting. Oh, you know what? Take a look over here. Outcome of the second round to reach the next round is minus 185. I like this. All we got to do is finish the second round. That's um that's great. That's better than the two the over two and a half if it exists because I think I, I believe DraftKings should have the over uh, posted. And I'm going to check that for you. But um, the fight to reach next round sounds good to me. Um, it's a high-profile fight for Lauren Murphy. I think she wants to give her all. Valentina Shevchenko wants to give her all. Um, you know, Lauren Murphy is no joke. She's going to she's going to stay in there I believe. I think she's going to be staying the fight. So the outcome of round 2 is to reach the next round. To finish the round it's going to go to the next. That's how I understand it. Um and that's a good that's from minus 2000 to go to 185 is solid, okay? That's solid. Um. Uh, that's solid. I don't like this part. I mean, so far we're looking good uh, with what we're cooking here. Um. But yeah, so let's just go back and talk about these two girls. And I actually just I don't even need to look at anything here. Um, I can just speak on this fight. And um, Valentina Shevchenko has been training. MMA since she was six years old she's an absolute assassin she has 21 wins and they're all even splits seven knockouts seven submissions seven decisions she's an absolute assassin she has great kicks head kicks vicious elbows you know her ground and pound is solidified she packs power in her dynamite hands. Um, she's a true, true martial artist. She's a true warrior. She She's about that life. Lauren Murphy has a great record, 15-4. and four. She does this too. Um, she is a bit up there in age. And if you just look at the five fights that the girls had, Lauren, Lauren Murphy is going through the likes of uh, Mara Borrello. Andrea Lee in a split. 
Roxanne Mataferi, Lilia Shakarova, Joanne Calderon, who's no slouch, but again, you know what I'm saying, in a split. What is Valentina doing? She's taking out Jessica I, head kick, in a nasty, nasty, nasty head kick. She's taking out Liz Carmouche in a unanimous. She's taking out Caitlin Cokagan with ground and pound from Crucifix. Nasty. She's taking out Damien, uh, Jennifer Maya. Um, and that was just unanimous, but, uh, you know, push the pace. Um, and Jessica Andrade with a KO from Crucifix. Again, um, I, I don't think she's going to violate Lauren Murphy like that because I think Lauren Murphy just knows this is her last big hoorah. She's never going to get another title shot. Let's just be let's be bl bl uh, blatant about that. Um, however, uh, however, um, to to do anything in here if you want to, I I see the clearest thing to do is if we re revisit again is the result of round two. The outcome is for it to finish, hopefully, and go to the third round. That's all we need to do is to go to the third round, and that's solid. That's better than over one and a half, uh, two and a half. It's better than anything else, and this is solid read, I believe. Um, let me know what you guys think. Let let, let me know if, if I'm just being an asshole. Uh, just let me know. In any case, that's what I see. Uh, the bullet is the bullet. That's it. 97%. And... Boys, we have reached the main event. All right, so let's take a look from the challenger, Brian T-City Ortega. I will go on record and say I automatically don't like this guy for the simple fact that he stole my girlfriend, Tracy. Um, yeah, I'm so pissed about that, but good for, good, good for him. Good for him. They're, they make a great couple, um, in all fairness. Uh, but yeah. 30 years old, um, at the top of his life, you know what I'm saying, uh, has a pretty nasty Brazilian jiu-jitsu, his striking look crisp against the zombie, he looked great against Frankie Edgar, mostly everybody does at this point, um, looked great against Cop Swanson and Renato Moicano, he even took out Guida in 2016. So what can I say? I think, you know, he had a pretty easy road. Uh, but once he met Max Holloway, he got violated. He didn't even he didn't even fight in round five, I believe. So, yeah, I mean, why is that important? Because Al uh, uh, Alexander Volkanovsky went two fights back to back with Max Holloway. First one, he won. There's no argument. December 14 to 2019, he destroyed... Max Holloway, he just beat him, okay? In this split, depending how you look at it, Max Holloway looked good, and he gave his all, okay? They still gave the nod to Volkanovski. So, for the simple fact that he went twice with this man, and Max Holloway is a monster. Uh, this guy is 22-6, and six, but don't forget something. This guy... Um, just went against Kelvin Cater, and he violated his life. His boxing looked crazy. And if I hope this happens, I am praying this happens. I want to see him versus Yair Rodriguez. There's going to be a lot of love on Yair Rodriguez. Um, we don't even have a line, but if there is, um, I'm going to jump on Max all day over here. I love that. I love this fight. Okay, you got to... Up and coming hungry fighter, um, Yair Rodriguez, and um, who just beat Jeremy Stevens, no surprise. And you know he's 28 years old. He's getting right, right, right there at the at the peak. But uh, Max Holloway is only 29, guys, and he's a former champion who defended his title against Brian Ortega, Jose Aldo, Jose Aldo, Anthony Pettis, and um, he fought Ricardo Lamas over here. So yeah, it's um, to to Volkanovski is a beast, man. That's that's all. Um, in terms of power, I believe Volkanovski gets the check mark in power. In wrestling, it depends how it goes. Okay, um, if you look at 
aggressive wrestling, pushing against the cage, going for those strong dives. I like Volkanovski. Um, I think he has also great and excellent defense against um, any potential uh, wrestling uh, maneuvers by Brian Ortega. So uh, that's that's good. Uh, and if the fight stands, if the fight stands and they want to scrap it out, I kind of have to go with Volkanovski because if you went with Max, you know MMA math doesn't always work out. But if you're gonna if you're gonna go that route, you know. And um, what I want to do here is the same exact thing, is to round props, and the outcome of first round to reach the seven. So they they do expect it to go to the second round. Um, do they expect it to go to the third round? They do. Do they want it to go to the fourth round? They do. There's really no value. Um, oh, the only thing is if you think there's going to be a stoppage, no fifth round. Fight does not start fifth round. No plus 128. If That would be only if you think it's going to be inside the distance. If you believe Volkanovski's taking him out like he said he is, and historically speaking, if you put up enough damage on Brian Ortega, I think you can just crack him. Um, then that's a good solid play. Uh, Volkanovski straight money line because I like Volkanovski minus 176. Sounds pretty good to me. So in the fantasy parlay, we have four uh, because we didn't do any picks for um, for Nick Diaz uh, and Robbie Lawler. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to back somebody, I'm going to back Robbie Lawler. Uh, that's five. And if you put five bucks, guys, just five bucks. Nothing crazy. Minus 140. What a what a good night. From five bucks. Put ten bucks in a parlay. Here's your 281. Excellent night. Pays for the drinks, pays for the food, pays for the ter- transportation, pays for the gas, pays for a lot of things. Um you can even maybe go to a uh a titty bar if you if that's how you roll. So yeah, um, Pretty much, that is where I'm leaning with this. This is where it's solid. Um, obviously, you can always replace Jarzinho Rosenstruck uh, with Curtis Bladis uh, by decision. Uh, that's also a plus money uh, play. That's plus 120. So if you take this thing out and you put in method of victory, Curtis by points is actually plus 220 like I said I don't see Curtis Blade is knocking Jarzini Rosenstruck out I could be wrong this is this is heavyweight boys but uh that's still a solid night okay like I said it depends where you look at I really like plus 420 I like 420 and um I like this five leg parlay so um that's kind of what I'm gonna cook it up to be okay um, and I'm actually going to write this down so we can reference it um, when we come back to revisit this later on. So, Jessica Andraj, ML, Moneyline, uh, Valentina versus Lauren, Valentina versus Lauren. To complete second round, right? We want to reach the end of second round, so we want to reach. Oh, pardon me. We want to reach the end of second. Go to the third, so we want the fight to start in the third round, at least. Um, we want Volkanovski versus Brian Ortega. We want money uh, on Volkanovski. Alexander the Great, minus 176. Um, if you want to back Robbie Lawler, which I want to back Robbie Lawler, I'm going to be rooting for this guy, man. I'm scared about this piece. Uh, minus 138, you can always take that out. Um, and, you know, there's uh, uh, actually tons of action in the prelims, which I didn't cover, but you can, like Talia Santos. Um, 
she's a pretty much automatic in my book. Uh, Talia Santos. You can back Dan Hooker. You can back Chris Dawkins. You can back Marab Devalishvili. Okay, minus two fifty. Um, uh, where is um? Where is Taylor Santos minus four twenty? She's kind of automatic too. Um, here's your five legger, two hundred bucks. I feel better over here actually. Instead of putting that uh, Nick Diaz and Robbie Lawler fight, um, again you can always take away Jarzinho Rosenstruck play and um, and be safe. And if you want to play like. Um, Chris Dawkins at minus two fifteen, D you know Marab, who's really good. You can play Marab, uh, Marab, Divalishvili. But again, you're not gonna get a lot of value. It's only plus four sixty. So, because yeah, you're getting a bunch of bunch of favorites. So at that point, it's just you, you need a plus. You need a nice plus, and the only plus that I can even remotely remotely um, recommend is oh did this change the hell happened over here Nick huh Carl Robertson withdrew wow okay no surprise there so they bring this new guy Cody Brondage I didn't I don't know who that is uh, but all of a sudden, Nick's Ma Nick Maximoff became a minus 210 favorite. Uh, go figure. Go figure on that. Um, but you know what? Let's go back. I'm going to stay true. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to jump around. Why am I jumping around? I'm going to stay true. I like the value. Um, Jarzini Rosenstruck plus, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay true to this parlay. Uh, Jessica Andrade. End of second round for the co main event, Volkanovski money line, Taylor Santos, minus 420. What are you gonna do? Um, maybe tell you Santos via KO because she's just she's gonna crack, she's gonna crack Mata Ferry, in my opinion. I mean, that might be a sleeper in terms of value pick. Um, let me see this, Talia Santos, right here. I might even do that. Method of victory. Taylor Santos by KO. 420. Yo, 420 is such a good number. $10 for $868. Five team parlay. Cross my fingers. Let me let me live. And I'll be straight. Um, in fact, I might even do I might even put a 20 and call that a wrap. I'm gonna I might even call a 20 and call that a wrap. I just need Talia Santos with a KO. And nothing else. I need Rose's truck to come in with blazing KO and nothing else. I need Volkanovski to come through on the main card. I need the fight to go to the next round. And I need Jessica Andrash to deliver. Jessica, let's go, baby. That's my five uh, team parlay, if you will. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that kind of sums out UFC 266. Um my picks are, as you can see, nothing crazy. I'm just going to do a parlay for every event. And um, if we hit it, we hit it. And if not, let's see how many of those legs were, were good picks. So you can, you know, do your evaluation moving forward. I am absolutely pumped for this card. I will be watching it um, probably at FanDuel in New Jersey. Uh, they got a bunch of screens. Gonna be, it's gonna be a bunch of guys. It's gonna be Saturday. There's gonna be a lot of like college and uh, uh, college football games going on. It's gonna be a good night. I think Anthony Joshua is fighting. I want to talk about that. Um, I'm gonna root for Anthony Joshua. By the way, here, here. If you really want to do that, boxing. Forgot Anthony Joshua is fighting. Minus three ten. It is what it is, baby. Tag him on. Tag him on to that $20 parlay. Uh, six legs, $2,300. That will be a solid night. I mean solid night. I'll be 
chilling, chilling, chilling. And Anthony Joshua is at five o'clock, so that's how you're gonna start. Mm, let's go, AJ. Let's go, baby. Let's go. We're gonna tag that in, okay? Six leg parlay with AJ for the boxing. Um, you know, you can always swap some of this. You know, there's gonna be a lot of college NFL, uh, college uh, football games going on. Maybe want to tag it into Sunday. Uh, with like a late game, so you could, you know, maybe cash out, love those as well. Um, so yeah, again, this is Battle Cage, this is what we do here. I will have a couple of fights for the prelims to talk about, and um, uh, I want to talk about Dan Hooker, Nasser, and Hasprof with you guys. I want to talk if Chris Dawkins is the real deal, and I'm, I'm I want to talk about Nick Maximoff, like. Who is Nick Maximoff, and um, who the hell is Cody uh, Brondage? Because that could be like a whole different uh, video by itself. So, thank you everybody for sticking with me. It's we're at 51 minute mark. I talk a lot sometimes. I'm gonna try to keep it short. I will try to keep my breakdowns to 40 minutes, guys. Uh, I went a little bit over with my introductions and my little rambling. So, thank you for sticking it out. Timestamps coming soon. Probably not this video, but coming soon. Let me know how the audio is. Tell me how my lighting is. If I need to brighten up this place, or you guys are okay with it, um, let me know how you like my style in terms of breakdowns and whatnot. I'm not very analytical in terms of, you know, this. You know, I don't go by like DF, DFS type of stuff. You know, like uh, straight too much, too many numbers. It's just too many things to. To worry about, you know, I give you my impression. A lot of them come from just, you know, looking at the fighter as a, as a human being, as a complete package and just rolling the dice with it. So, yeah, thank you guys. Make sure you hit that like, hit that subscribe, comment down below, and um, let's freaking do this. God bless and stay safe, guys. I'm out of here.